Well, that's it, folks. Not sure if it's new, but we're at a point where the Supreme Court not doing the misogynistic is so striking, it's newsworthy. So I guess at best we can call this a piece of bittersweet news. When faced with the option of doing an incredibly sexist thing that would clearly violate the intentions of the Constitution and the common understanding of justice in a way that would unfairly favor religion, the Supreme Court didn't. So this story comes to us from a charter school in North Carolina that had a policy requiring all female students to wear skirts. This policy was enacted in the words of the school to protect chivalry. Well, a couple of beskirted students took issue with it, so parents complained. And apparently the school's defense was, we actually do a ton of sexist stuff, kind of our thing. Like, for real, they responded to the complaint by pointing out that they also require boys to hold doors for the girls and that they require that each boy carry an umbrella so that they can keep rain off of the female students. And as one parent wrote in the suit, quote, I want my daughter to grow up knowing that she is as capable as her male classmates, that she can achieve as much as her male classmates can, and that she does not need her male classmates to protect her, end quote. In other words, she can carry her own fucking umbrella. When the school fails to change the policy, the parents team up with the ACLU to sue them, and they win. The courts ruled that this is a super obvious violation of the Equal Protections Clause of the 14th Amendment, but the school appealed and lost again. So they appealed again, this time to the Supreme Court, and ultimately 10 states urged the SCOTUS to take up the case and exempt charter schools from the 14th Amendment, even though they're publicly funded. But they didn't, which is nice. It's kind of like when the supervillain at least spoils his cat. And believe it or not, I'm going to follow this up with a little more good news, thanks to astute listener Emily, who sent us this one at scathingnews at gmail.com. See, one of the real hotly contested battlegrounds in terms of American abortion rights at the moment is the state of Arizona. When the Dobbs decision came down, Arizona's laws were thrown so out of whack that abortion providers were worried about being prosecuted under the laws that predated Arizona's statehood and never got updated because the SCOTUS was setting the rules. And amid the fear and chaos in the aftermath, the normally red-leaning state elected themselves a Democratic governor who specifically ran on a platform of protecting reproductive rights. Well, that governor, Katie Hobbs, is doing what she can to make good on that promise, even though she's fighting against a lot of super conservative state, county, and municipal officials to do so. Last week, she signed an executive order that would give the state attorney general jurisdiction in all attempts to prosecute anyone for abortion-related crime stripping overzealous anti-choice county prosecutors of the ability to dust off some shit from the 19th century and try to jail a doctor with it. The order also vowed to deny extradition for anybody accused of violating anti-abortion laws in other states and established an advisory council specifically tasked with fighting more lasting ways to protect abortion access in the state. So yeah, the SCOTUS didn't do a bad thing and the state of Arizona did a good thing. Both equally unusual propositions that came together to make for a surprisingly pleasant twin this week. But I promise to enrage you better next time. For now, though, I'll just hand you back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli.